All right, so next step is to secure the uh, cylinder. So there's one, these are just aluminum nuts, so we're only gonna torque them to 29 foot-pounds, according to the service manual. And I'm gonna torque these extremely even. It's gonna take me a while to kind of get to the final torque because I, I wanna make sure that as I'm compressing that gasket down, I get nice, even pressure. Okay, now we'll go ahead and put on the head gasket. So according to the diagram, the, the ridge needs to be pointed up. So just like I've got there. Okay, now we'll go ahead and just drop the head on here. Oops. Situate that. Okay, so these bolts, 18 foot pounds. 18 foot pounds. So we're going to do washer first. Washer. And six. So the thing is, is, I don't like these nuts. So I'm probably just gonna replace them. I just haven't. Like they just look so ugly. Like maybe once I get everything torqued down, if I blast some paint in there, it'll probably be all right. But okay, got that. Okay, what? Okay, so there's all six torqued to 220 inch pounds, 18 foot pounds. I don't know, I guess the exact number is 216 inch pounds, but I just rounded to 220, good enough. All right, so now let's actually try out our dial gauge and see how things worked out. I've got, a, I've got the head secured. Everything's torqued down. Now, one thing to keep in mind is I actually think that I use a, just a slightly thicker gasket than uh, probably what the manufacturer spec calls for, and that's just because they had the wrong gasket in the in the kit that I ordered from Thailand, and I don't want to wait for another one. You can see that I've got a nice new shiny head gasket in there. So I've got the timing uh the, or the dial gauge set up so what i'm doing is we've got my my dial gauge uh adapter that i fabricated diy okay and i've got my uh one eighth allen key ready to go just that set screw to, to to get it set up okay i'll take my dial gauge and i'm going to put it in and then I'm going to just secure that set screw. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, just to where it is secured and it stops moving around. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so as far as the instructions, what it tells me to do here in the manual is it wants me to follow this, the first four steps for the, the DT125 E and the DT125MX, with which both have uh, contact points. So steps one through four is basically just going to say, "Hey, get us to top dead center, and then get the dial gauge uh, zeroed out." So I'm going to I'm going to rotate 
counterclockwise until the gauge bottoms out. Okay, so I'll do that again. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna keep going until I know that it stops climbing. Okay, so that's top dead center right there. So now I'm gonna take the dial gauge and I'm gonna put my zero right there. And then it says, wiggle it backwards and forth and make sure that the dial does not go past the zero. So backwards, forth, forth, backwards. See, it stays at zero. Okay, so now I'm at top dead center. All right, so now I'm gonna go down the, the service manual pages here and I've gotta go down to the DT175E which is a couple pages down. And then again, it tells me to follow steps one through four for the DT125E and the DT125MX and ignition timing procedure. And then it says, starting at top dead center, rotate flywheel clockwise until gauge reads approximately two needle revolutions before top dead center. So I don't know why it tells me to do that. It's like it wants me to go past it and then come back to the right reading. And I don't know why it would do that. Because really from, from uh, BTDC is before top dead center, it's 1.8 millimeters plus or minus 0.15 millimeter, but this gauge is in inches, so I don't care about millimeters, I care about inches. So the setting is 0 0.072. So I'm going to go, so I'm going to rotate backwards 10, 20, 30. 40, 50, 60, 70, 1, 2. Okay, so that is rotating back 0 0.072 inches plus or minus six thousandths of an inch. Okay, now now that I've got it back in uh, in timing, let's go. Let's look and see how my timing marks actually line up. So from factory, I'm, there's three marks that you're looking at. Crankcase mark, stator mark, flywheel mark. Now, you'll notice everything lines up barely off. You see how that's just like, bare, like now that I look at it from this angle, the, the new mark is just barely to the left. So what I would do is I'm going to I'm going to just make a little mark on the crankcase and then I'm going to pop off the magneto and then I'm going to loosen up this base plate right here with the two screws and I'm just going to barely turn it one line to the left. But I mean you can see like would this the engine run like this? Yeah, it would. Um in fact, if we do the plus or minus six thousandths of an inch, so, I mean, let's see. Let me let me actually just line this right up. So that actually took us. That took us. One, two, three, four, five, six. We are right at tolerance. We are, we're actually plus six thousandths of an inch if we line up these marks exactly. So it's still within tolerance. It would still, the engine would still run, but I'm actually going to take this back to 0.072. And we're just barely, barely, barely off, like a line, like a line width. So if I really wanted to be anal and really make sure, because what, what, what the, it finishes off here with the instructions. It says, check the marks on the flywheel and crankcase for alignment. If they are not aligned or a new crankcase is used for replacement, punch a new mark on the crankcase matching the one on the flywheel. Okay, so I don't even know if I'm going to bother with an adjustment. Now I will. What I'm going to do is I'm just barely, barely, barely. So basically I'm going to put the line of that base plate just a line width to the left of the uh, the crankcase. So I'm actually going to move this line right here, and I'm going to move it so it lines up just one line width to the left of this line on the crankcase. I don't think that's going to make that big of a difference, but 
while we have it all apart and everything like that, um, I, I went through all this trouble to use the dial gauge. I don't want, it's almost like I don't want the manufacturer's set up to work. Uh, I want to make sure that that was worth it. So that sounds crazy. Okay, so went ahead and pulled the flywheel off. So now I'm just going to zip these loose just real quick. Using the impact wrench is the easiest way to do it. Just be gentle. Okay, so then like I mentioned, I'm barely going to turn this. I mean, just so that it's like a line width off center. And that right there, right there, we'll put it right dead on uh, per the uh, service manual. That'll put me at the 72, uh, 72 thou advance. Okay, there we go. So now, that is such, it's, you know, this is the, uh, this is the world where thousandths of an inch are like a thing. So a thousandths of an inch could mean, you know, your, your engine, uh, the power band moves or it runs rough or it runs perfectly. Right? Okay, so I'm gonna torque these back down to 100 inch pounds. And put the flywheel back on. All right, so one last check. So here I'm going to take the dial. I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise until the piston starts to rise. Okay, and then I'm going to keep going back and forth until I'm rotating counterclockwise until it hits zero and starts to come back down. So let's just say, again, let's just say that I started out with my gauge like this, so it doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, I'm going to go clockwise until it's, it starts to rise, and then it's gonna stop rising and then start falling right there. So I think that's my peak. So now I'm gonna set my zero right there. Okay, now I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna keep going back and forth and see if it goes above the zero. And it doesn't do that. But what I'm what I need to do is I need to back it off 72 thousandths of an inch. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 72 thousandths of an inch. Now let's go check the marks down here. And then can you see how the flywheel Let's see, the flywheel and the base plate are lined up right there. So you can see how it's off of the crankcase mark, but I already knew that because I'm actually pretty much right on with my dial gauge. So it'd be 30, I'm at like 31 right now. So I'm at 71 thousandths of an inch before top dead center. So I expect it to be just a little bit off the crankcase mark because I know that I used a little bit thicker uh, cylinder gasket than uh, factory. So I get, I guess I just came, I came out expecting that that was going to be the case. But in any case, now I know that I've got the flywheel and the base plate lined up, and that base plate was lined up when it gave me the service. Uh, uh, the service manual instruction of 72,000, seven inch before top dead center. So that's how you do that. Hopefully that's clear.